Hi guys, I'm Bex and welcome to Trista Bites. Today we're going to be looking at the New Wave Toys Replicade Centipede Miniature Arcade Cabinet. This was kindly lent to me by Quang from Asobitech. I highly recommend you check out his channel. He is a prolific collector of retro consoles, so do check him out. For those of you who are interested in the history of Centipede, we'll run over a few facts about the game first, but if you just want to see the unboxing of this arcade cabinet, then click to this timestamp and that'll be where the unboxing starts. <laughs> Centipede was the incredibly successful vertically oriented fixed shooter by Atari that came out in 1981. It's an incredible game, it's down in sort of golden age of gaming history and it's one that most people going to the arcades at the time would have played. The game was designed by Ed Lodge and Donna Bailey and it was released in the arcades in 1981 and across a number of other systems including the ColecoVision as I am sporting here. Over the next six years it was also released in the Apple II, Atari 2600, 5200, 7800, 8-bit, BBC Micro, C64, IBM PC, Intellivision, TI-99, 4A and VIC-20. The game received the award in 1984 for the best computer action game. You could play in one or two player mode, taking turns to fight off centipedes, creatures and everything else the game could throw at you. It was one of the most successful arcade games of the time. Of the two primary creators on the team, Lodge was an Atari veteran, having worked on hit games including Asteroids, whereas this was Bailey's first game, and not just for Atari, her first game at all. She was an assembly programmer for General Motors, and decided after playing Space Invaders that that's what she wanted to do, so she moved City and pitched her skills to Atari. She became one of the first female arcade game programmers for their coin op team. As the two main people on the project, Donna picked the idea for Centipede from a, a brainstorming notebook that already existed, and between Ed's experience and her fresh ideas, including the very distinctive colour scheme, an instant hit was born. Centipede's a really difficult game. There's a busy field of play covered in mushrooms, and it takes four shots to destroy the mushrooms, and there's a rampaging centipede which comes closer to you quicker because there's mushrooms, and if you shoot it in the middle it becomes two centipedes, and then there's a jumping spider which eats mushrooms, but also the player, dive bombing fleas, scorpions poison the mushrooms, and then when they touch the centipede they change its behaviour, and it really keeps you on your toes, let's say. The rollerball controller was a big feature in the smooth, rapid movement of the player sprite, and the game was a huge success. Centipede was followed in 82 by a sequel called Millipede. This did well but it didn't quite reach the heights of the original. There was an MB board game in 83 which looks kinda cool. Centipede has since been included in a whole bunch of arcade classic style compilation games including versions with an added two-player co-op mode but I'm not listing those all here. There's apparently was almost a 3D fancy role-playing game based on it for the Jaguar CD, which sounds odd. In 98, a completely reimagined third-person centipede shooter for PC, PlayStation and Dreamcast that was created that I utterly missed even existed. There's also a third-person run-and-gun post-apocalyptic story-driven game for the Wii and 3DS, which is sort of a sequel slash evolution of the 98 one, but it's so far from being centipede by now I'm not even sure it should be on the list. Right, back to the actual proper centipede that is in this box here. Right, so let's open it up and see what we have. So we have the box inside, another box snugly fitted in here. Um, this is slightly different actually because the Tempest I received, maybe because it was the backer edition, um, didn't have... oh god, packaging. Graceful. Uh, this this one's in um, sealed cellophane, which my version of Tempest was not. I feel really bad now. Um, Quang, are you sure you're okay for me to open this too late now? Um, I'm gonna break the seal on this bad boy. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? This is this is a completely sealed unit. I probably should not be using scissors on anything. I'm being very very gentle. Very very gentle. Ah. I'm so sorry any collectors watching this that think this is a terrible travesty. Sorry! Right, that, that's done. I can't, I can't undo that now, it's done. Right, without the shiny packaging on we can take a much better look at the actual box itself. It is absolutely beautiful and it has a lot of the same awesome qualities as the Tempest cabinet that I reviewed a little while ago. It has a beautiful gloss spot print on the Centipede logo there. Looks, plays and controls like the original arcade game. We have gloss spot print on the Atari logo on the side, on Centipede here and on the Replicade Amusements 
sign there. This is also a lovely, high quality, gorgeous box. It's, it's lovely. The artwork's lovely. Everything is lovely. It's, of course, very similar to the Tempest box. The cardboard feels wonderful and I feel incredibly guilty still for taking the plastic off this, but it is an absolutely stunning bit of design. Um, right, we shall open this up and take a look inside. Gravity, do your job. Gravity. Yay! So opening up the box, um, we've got this nice protective packaging and you can see inside here we have, uh, we'll start with this packet here. This contains uh, a tiny instruction manual. So yeah, this is gorgeous, high quality paper, very thick, um, contains just all your basic instructions. Very nice. You have a USB charger here, standard USB charger, and you have tiny coins. Oh, these are still amazing. I squeaked out so hard when I saw these in the Tempest box and yeah, I'm still the same with these. Um, you have to be very, very careful with these. I suggest putting them somewhere very safe and never opening this packet because they are so tiny and adorable. In the Tempest one, there were uh, a spare controller knob, which obviously doesn't apply here, but also there were some spare little rubberized feet for the bottom, which we don't seem to have in this one, but that's not too much of a, a major issue. Um, but yeah, the tiny coins are just, just adorable, really. And then we have the unit itself. Uh, I do still love how nice and securely packaged this is. Oh wait, this is a slightly different shape. How am I supposed to get this one out? No, no, it is definitely supposed to come out the... Oh no, this one, this one comes out differently. This is confusing. Right, okay. So this one comes out the back. Do, do, do. If I can do this without breaking it. <laughs> Just so Quang does not kill me. Right, okay. Oh, wow, actually, I've just noticed. Just hidden in the back here, there is New Wave Toys 25 cents push to start keyring, uh, which is solid metal, very weighty, gorgeous New Wave Toys logo on the back. And you press it and it lights up. Absolutely gorgeous. Really love these, they're hefty and, and wonderful. I was pleasantly surprised with the first one of those that I held, how, how weighty and well-made that was. Right, so here we have the cabinet itself. It's gorgeous. It's pretty much uh, an exact scale replica of the Centipede Arcade cabinet. It has the classic profile as well as the gorgeous artwork. It is constructed from wood and metal. It's very solid design. It's, yeah, it's gorgeous really. It has the rubberized feet on the bottom. Sticker slightly squiff on the back here. So we have the iconic Centipede artwork. We have the buttons and things all in miniature on the front. This one was slightly delayed because they put a lot of effort into making sure the trackball would be absolutely perfect, which is really appreciated. On the top of the back here, we have the power button and a volume control and a little light. Again, I would slightly have preferred to have had um, several lights so you could see how much battery was remaining. I don't know if there's a battery indicator anywhere else. You have the speaker on the back and you have the charge point at the bottom here, which just takes a standard USB. So that's absolutely fine. It's reasonably weighty. It's, um, it's pretty beautiful to look at. I think it's gonna look lovely next to the Tempest one if I could steal it and keep it rather than having to give this one back to a Semitech. And yeah, it's lovely. It's very small and cute. The screen is still... I'm knocking things over, sorry. The screen is still of a, a reasonable size. It is one six scale. It's small and cute and lovely. Still looks large enough to be playable. The trackball on there feels really gorgeous. Uh, you also have... you can open if you sort of lift here and... Oh, I did this first time on the other one. <laughs> what have I done? Just want to open the little door. So yeah, so this one was a tiny bit stiff, but you can open the little door at the front and then you can store something inside this little cubby hole. Um, again, as with the, the Tempest one, I can see a hole, if I can get the camera to focus in there, there's a hole where you can sort of see into the rest of the unit. So I wouldn't put the tiny coins in there, but you could store something in there. And it's just a really, really lovely feature that that opens up like an arcade cabinet. I will now shut that and not attempt to open it again. So you have the button to add credits and start and 
the menu button are on the front there again. And yeah, now it would have been nice if there'd been an actual hole to put the coins in, but then I wouldn't put the actual coins in because they might get lost. So I guess that's kind of a mute point. I don't know. That's just me being exceedingly pedantic though. Nevertheless, it's still entirely cute and lovely to have that feature on the front there just as an extra touch. So overall, I, I think the unit, like the build quality, it looks absolutely lovely. Initial feel of the trackball is wonderful. The quality of the artwork, the vibrancy, the fact it's made of real wood is all really wonderfully reassuring with this. I have absolutely no complaints about the outside of the machine here. It looks to me as close a replica as you could possibly get of the real arcade unit, just in amazingly cute uh, one six scale. So before we play this, I should Peel this off. Mm, are you ready? You ready? Only happens the once. One take. Oh, I did this so badly on the other one as well. So this is the, the peel and reveal. Oh, listen to that noise. Oh yeah. Let's get this turned on and give it a game. Okay, right. Let's power this on, which means holding this top button for a few seconds and then it will light up. There we go, new wave toys and, oh, marquee is lit up. Replicate amusements present. Got the Atari logo on there because this is the official original ROM running on here, licensed by Atari. Already that's quite nice sounding sound. I don't know well, how well that's picking up on the mic, but the speaker's reasonably BV. But first thing to do, I'm gonna go into the menu here and show you what options we've got available in the menu. Um, we've got the, the backlight, um, which I'm assuming I press here to go, yeah, let's go up. Okay, so I can make the backlight brighter or dimmer. That's quite nice to be able to do. Um, and then, uh, how do I go to the next option? Oh, no, wait, this one. Uh, the marquee light on or off. So you can save battery power or not. You can also see how bright the, uh, the light actually is. So that's a good way of saving battery power, I guess. And you can do the trackable sensitivity. We'll leave it on medium for now just to test what it's like out of the out of the box uh, and we can close there and then have a go at the game obviously it's got the one and two player where you take turns options fire button and this very beautiful feeling little trackball feels incredibly smooth so I can't wait to actually see how it feels to play so we'll go into one player and instantly dead So first off the bat, it is slightly hard to see your shots, I'm going to say, like we can't really quite see where the bullets, zaps, whatever, are coming out of you. I think that's partly because you're using the original ROM, this might have actually benefited from them just adding ah, <laughs> another pixel to that in order to make it slightly easier to see. Also, I'm really, really not the best centipede player ever. This is a game I have not played a huge amount of time, so bear with me as I die many times playing this. I played it a couple of times, but mostly on the coffee table versions. The trackpad is really, really responsive. Actually, it feels it feels really lovely. It's definitely a very smooth, rollable movement. That you can tell that they put a lot of effort into making sure that this felt correct and this. I think it's pretty responsive. I'm not detecting any serious lag. Uh, this is just on the normal sensitivity setting, and I'd say that's probably about right. The same as I did with the Tempest one. The, the out of the box configuration seems to be the best one, but you can obviously play around with that yourself. The fire button seems pretty responsive. Um, yeah, I can't really fault this. It seems to me to be reasonably arcade perfect. I'm a terrible player of Centipede, so if you have found any lag or any issues, do let me know. But this is definitely a playable game. The controls, I don't feel cramped by the casing around them. I feel like there's, there's plenty of room. My hands are quite small, but I think even if your fingers were quite significantly larger than mine, this would still be really easy to use, actually. The, the trackball is definitely well-sized, well-thought-out. It looks very much 
and feels very much as you would expect. Um, I'm quite impressed with that actually, the, the feel of this is pretty good. Again, I'm a terrible centipede player, I've never been particularly good at this game, so as I'm talking while I'm playing, which doesn't help either, but yeah, I'm feeling this is, this is pretty good. I'm quite impressed, I have to say. This is definitely a playable version of it. Again, if you have if you have found any issues, please let me know. I'm not going to get to any of the higher levels, especially not on this first go. But I'm I'm liking it. I'm saying I'm saying going to say that this is a pretty nice way of playing Centipede. The screen is pretty easy to see. It's very crisp. It's very clear. The speakers are nice. The sound is is very crisp and clear and nice. I feel it's quite a legitimate recreation of the sound that was coming out of the arcade machines, albeit in miniature. I'm not feeling like it's too tinny or it's lacking in bass or punch in any way, so quite impressed by the speaker, definitely. The volume control, um, I've tested that very, very briefly off camera and that did respond. It did have a, a good yeah, you bastard range of quiet all the way up to um, very loud. I've got it sort of in the middle at the moment so you can hear me talking at the same time. I'm impressed, I'm enjoying it. It would take me a long time to master Centipede. I find it quite a, a panic-inducing manic game, but it's it's definitely a really nice version of it. So overall, I really like this. It's, it's beautiful to look at. The construction is absolutely top-notch. It's a brilliant replica of the Centipede unit at 1-6 scale. If you are a collector and you want a series of these, New Wave Toys are doing them. They have already the Tempest Arcade and the Street Fighter Arcade is in production as well, so these are a growing collection. It's definitely aimed at the collector market. I do appreciate all the effort they put into making the trackball uh, feel as wonderfully smooth as they have. That's something that I imagine took quite a lot of R&D to get right and they've done a brilliant job there. Bear in mind because they're limited edition and aimed at the collector market you are looking at about $120 for one of these and you'll be paying possibly import tax if you're in the UK as well but it's gorgeous and if you were going to collect these and put them in a row on a shelf make a miniature arcade for your pets or something like this is uh, it's a beautiful way to do it and it takes up a lot less room than having full-size arcade machines in your house which is also a bonus. If you have one of these, do let me know what you made of it and if you're enjoying gameplay on it and uh, if you're planning on collecting the rest in the series that New Wave Toys are creating. Also, thank you very much for joining me and watching the video. I also want to thank my Patreons, whose names will be scrolling up the side here now, so thank you very much. And again, thank you to Quang for Asobi Tech for letting me open and break the seal on this rather beautiful collectible. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye! Centipede.